Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel and happy Wednesday to everyone. I hope you're having a great week so far. We've got two things in the works today. First, we're going to create this beautiful trifold folio with pockets. What I am planning to do for the next month or so is really work through some of my stash collections like this one is Cozy Evening from Minte Paper. So I'm just pulling out the whole collection and working through all of it so that I can make room in the cabinet for all of the new Christmas supplies that I need to bring in for the 12 days of Christmas in July. So even though this one is a fall themed uh, collection. I am working around it, so it's going to be just more of a nature-inspired folio. And so we've got these lovely kind of woodlandy images here, and then there's pocket pages inside with some inserts, and then we've also got full-size flips, and that will give you lots of room on the inside for finishing with your pictures and journaling. So lots of memories can be added to this sweet little folio. This may look familiar to to you um, from previous videos, but I have changed the measurements. So I thought it was worth covering the base again so that you could have all the layering measurements. And then secondly, uh, make sure to stay to the end of the video because we're going to have a quick channel update um, and just kind of fill you in on what's going on here at Polly's Paper Studio. So make sure you watch to the end. Um, and let's get started in making this beautiful trifold folio together. Before we get into the tutorial part of our video, I just want to take a quick second to thank my sweet friend, Diane, who has sent me a very sneaky surprise. This is all very beautiful, richly colored uh, printer paper in all of this beautiful variety. And she saw the paper bag album that we created with that. And so she sent me some of what she had. And I think that was so very thoughtful. You will be seeing uh, at least these two very soon. Um, and also I just wanted to mention how nice is Diane's writing. Like mine for real looks like a five-year-old on too much sugar, but you have the most beautiful script. So I just wanted to thank you, Diane, so much for this lovely gift and for being a longtime supporter of the channel. So thanks for that, Diane. So here is the base. And like I mentioned, we have made this very similar design in many previous videos, but I did change the measurements because I am more in mode to use up the paper rather than trying to be frugal with it and make it last. I just want to get through that collection. So I've got a couple of different sizes here and also a couple of different weights. My first piece is 110 pound cardstock. You do want that to be very sturdy. Um, and so this piece is six by nine and a half. I've scored it at four and a half and at five. So we're gonna get a page size of four and a half by six, and then our spine will be a half an inch. This will help me to get through more of that paper. I'm not as concerned about stretching every little bit. I just want to get through it and move on to the next collection. The second piece is also gonna be six, obviously, and then it is nine and a quarter. So I'm gonna come in and score it at four, and a half and four and three quarters. So for this side of the trifold, the spine will be just a quarter inch. So I'm going to come in with my usual two layers of adhesive. I've got this double-sided adhesive tape, and I'm gonna also bring in a line of this Tombow. It's pretty easy just to line these pieces up. The hard part will be keeping your fingers out of the glue. So I'm just lining up those score lines to make sure that everything stays nice and even and level. And so now we have created a piece that is long enough to fold in on itself. And so this is going to be the basic shape of the book. The next thing I wanna do is bring in a couple of flips and I want full size flips for this. Like I said, I'm going through as much of that paper as I can. So these are 65 pound weight. That just helps to reduce the bulk a little bit. This is going to be uh, nine by six. And then I scored it at four and a half. So these will be full page flips. I have one for the middle and one for the right. And I want them to open up 
outward so that you can see all of these layers at once. So I'm going to repeat my two layer adhesive system and then lay that right in along the edge, making sure that it's straight across the bottom as well. And that will secure this side. I'll do the same for the other side. So here will be the base for our folio. Now, of course, we have two flip pages. I also want to include a couple of pockets because that really helps to increase the amount of space you have and helps to uh, give you room to tuck things in if you don't want to adhere them. So I'm going to be bringing in um, the same color card stock throughout. I think that just looks a little bit more consistent. And this measurement, um, are for the full size pages. So that will be throughout the whole book. I only need to give that to you once and then that will be all for the whole thing. So I've got my paper from the collection and I know this looks a little bit like fall, but we're gonna cover that with our pocket. So our cardstock is four and three eighths by five and seven eighths. And then my pattern paper is four and a quarter by five and three quarters. That's just gonna give me all of my nice borders all the way around. So I'll just go ahead and center this and adhere it. This is going to be our pocket page. And so before I add any other bits, I want to have my pocket adhered on. So I do like to have the kind of pockets that wrap around. It just makes them much more secure and gives you extra room to tuck things in. And so I don't have a specific exact measurement for this. I will tell you that this is a piece of 65 pound weight card stock and I just cut off like three inches of it. Um, and then it's just the full width. It doesn't matter because we're gonna clip that part off. So what I did was I decided on how much of the layering I wanted on my pocket. So I decided that I wanted two inches for this pattern paper. Now I'm gonna add on that cardstock measurement so we're gonna get um, another eighth of an inch. So now I want my pocket to be two and a quarter and that's going to give me my borders on the top and the bottom. And because we're wrapping it, I don't need to worry about the sides. So here's my three inch piece of paper. I came in and I scored it, like I said, at two and a quarter. And then I moved that piece onto its long way and I measured it and I aligned it here with the top of my scoreboard and the right hand side of my page I scored right in that groove. And then I picked this up very carefully and slid it over just a little bit and then I made another score line here just on the other side. So that way you don't have to try and account for any of the excess of the measurement for the base. This will be a very nice, flat, sturdy pocket. So I'm just gonna show you where those score lines wound up being. I'll fold these here. And then I do want to take off some of the excess. So I'll just clip that off now. I don't really want to do a lot of precise measuring in this for me is the best way to add a pocket without having to do all the math things. Okay, so I've got enough of that taken off. I'm gonna come back in again and clip that corner right off up to the point where those score lines intersect in the corner and that way that'll take off a little bit of that bulk. Okay, so now we have a perfectly sized pocket that will wrap around our page. So the first thing I want to do is add my adhesive tape to the front and the back of these flaps, but I'm only going to pull the tape off, uh, the backing off for the inside ones to begin with. If I had to do math for every project, I for real would never get anything done or it would be not a very nice looking project. So I definitely appreciate this kind of freestyle pocket and you could even run this through your die cutting machine and make a little notch here if you liked that. Um, I'm gonna put this tape on while I've got the roll out, but I'm only gonna pull the portion that is on the inside to begin with. Because this wraps around to the back, you don't really need to be as concerned with 
the extra layer of adhesive. So I am right-handed. It makes sense to me to align this up toward my right hand. And I'll push that all the way up to where the score line is and make sure those will fold correctly. So I'll just press those over and this is going to create the pocket. And now I've got my double-sided adhesive all the way around the outside as well. I'm gonna pull all of this off and I think it is a good time now to bring back that Tombow because the bulkiness of the pocket is a little bit more heavy. So we definitely want to give that enough support. So let's go ahead and put some of that on now. And I've got my pockets planned for this page and this page so that I can accommodate for the bulk of it when it is folded. So now I'll just go ahead and adhere this to the book and I'm keeping an eye on and making sure all of the pockets are open to the top. And I'll just go ahead and position that with my regular borders around. So there will be a little bit of white showing around that'll be the base. So here's my pocket for this page. And like I mentioned, I have the coordinating layering pattern to go on top. And this will stretch from side to side. And then I'll have a little bit of that white border showing at the top and the bottom. So here's my first pocket page. I have one created already for this side. And this is another of the patterns that had the pumpkin in it. I'm trying to downplay the fact that this is a very seasonal collection. And so I flipped it over and that is fine. Um, the flowers can be a swag instead of an arrangement on the bottom. And so this is going to go right here. Same two layers of adhesive. And these two pages will show together. So I think it's nice that they coordinate. I'm gonna bring in a couple of just flat inserts. These aren't folded. They do have a base that is 110 pound cardstock. And I think that's a good idea for keeping this very sturdy. I didn't finish the back because I would like there to be room for some uh, journaling to be done. Writing can be added directly onto this or some additional pictures. And so the measurements for this 110 pound piece of cardstock is four by five and a half. And that fits pretty nicely into that pocket. Um, the cardstock is three and seven eighths by five and three eighths. And the pattern paper is three and three quarter by five and a quarter. So that gives me all of my nice borders and it is super nice and sturdy. And that will just tuck in there. I've got one for this page as well, because remember you can see them at the same time. Now I do want to dress up these pockets a little bit and what drew me to this collection in the first place was the beautiful nature inspired images. And so I want to add a couple of those in the form of the journaling cards, just a really large focal image for each pocket. This is going to be secured on the front of the pocket so our inserts will tuck in behind. And so I've just cut my journaling card down to three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. The cardstock border is four by three and then the 110 pound cardstock is four and eight by three and eight. And that way I'll have the sturdiness I need for this to hold its shape. So of course I only have adhesive toward the bottom so that I don't accidentally seal up my pocket. I'm just gonna add a little bit of my Tombow and I'll center this as best I can. I'm just going to give myself about a quarter to an eighth of an inch on the bottom measured from the bottom so that I can kind of keep these level with each other without having to do a tremendous amount of measuring. And so here's one for this side as well. Okay, so this is gonna be my first set of pages. They both have pockets and they both have inserts. There is 
more room in these pockets if you want to tuck in some additional items like flat keepsakes or mementos. So you'll have a lot of options on how you can finish this. So I think I'm just going to work along here while I give you the update for the channel. And you may have noticed recently, I have not been as consistent with getting out my two videos a week. And I'm just really struggling to find a balance um, trying to accomplish all the things that I want to for Polly's. And so that includes making videos, of course. I also try to keep my shop filled and create digital images and also kits. And so I don't want to give up any of those things. They're all very important part of Polly's Paper Studio. So the only thing I can think to do to get a little bit of control is to go back to one video a week. And so I think that we will maintain our Wednesday videos. Then we will just discontinue for the summer at least our Friday videos. And that way, hopefully I'll be able to schedule all of the things that I want to get done. And now, of course, this is not going to apply when it comes time for Christmas in July. Um, that is a 12 day event and I have a lot of fun with that. I'm hoping this year to put a lot more planning and preparing into it. Um, I just really want to make sure that I'm bringing you guys really great projects and um, so it's important to me to do a very good job. And I think this is how I can accomplish all of my goals is to just cut back on the one area where I was doing the most. Um, and that way I can have all of the things that I want to do. So that's what we're gonna do. So this will be the video for this week. And then that will be the beginning of our one video a week plan. And I'll keep that up through the summer and see how it goes. Uh, maybe I can bring it back. But for now, I think this is a good way to get all of the things done. So you can see that I added my pattern paper to the back. I've also got my full-size flips done. Isn't that a beautiful color? I wish I could find other things like trims and stuff in that color. It's really beautiful. Okay, so here's my pocket pages with inserts. This is the time where if you're adding a ribbon closure, you want to add that because you want to sandwich it between the cover and the base. So let's just cut off a generous amount here of this beautiful plaid ribbon from Really Reasonable Ribbon. I'll add a little tape to secure it while I'm working along. And then I'll bring in my front cover. So in this collection, there were quite a few um, very large images. And so I struggled to make them kind of a focal image on a background. So we're gonna swap that out for this project and I'm going to make the focal image the background and then I'll bring in a layering piece um, of a background paper to kind of break it up and give it a little bit more interest. So I do have that with the pretty blue cardstock border. It'll be easier to open this up, I think, and get that centered. Now my trim is sandwiched in there very securely. What I want to do is put some of my favorite finishing details on the front. So I'm gonna start with this die cut doily. This is that Recollections doily and I've just cut that with a nice crisp white cardstock. That helps to break up a little bit of that pattern. So like I said, I'm gonna bring in a more solid color background sort of paper for my layering piece. This is kind of, pretty vintagey uh, green color. And I do have that cut with a scalloped circle that has a stitching detail. So that just gives it a little bit more interest. I popped that up on a spacer because I did want to have a little bit more dimension. And now I'm gonna bring in my flower arrangement. So this is a really big flower for the front of a small book, but I really love how it coordinates. And so I'm gonna just use that is an impact statement flower, and then balance some smaller white flowers next to it to kind of complete that curve. So I do have die cut foliage and some netting and twine, and this is just going to be anchored. And I can do this because that is a pretty solid piece, and so I'm not worried about covering up 
any of an image or sentiment on there so that will work out fine and this is going on with some hot glue because it is heavy so now i can close up my book tie it with a nice generously sized bow i come in and notch these edges so that they don't fray and i'll put a couple of sequins on i think i just want to add three and I'll put them in this top corner because I think that helps to balance a little bit of the flower arrangement. So that will fit in that corner. And then I'm gonna secure those with my Tombow again. And that is all for our trifold folio with pockets. While I was trying to work through the rest of that paper, I was able to create this card. And it has a very similar styling and color palette. I'll come in later and add a portion for sentiment to be added. But this has kind of uh, a very shabby chic vintage vibe. So I did that one and then I had a little bit left. So here is just a basic A2 size card. And I used one of the journal cards cut into a small square that I could center on another doily. There's a lot of paper piecing on this one, just joining these patterns together so that I would have enough to cover. But that is all of the finished projects for this collection. I might have mentioned earlier, it's Cozy Evening by Mint Hay Paper. And this is all that is left. I could not bear to cut down that deer. So I'm gonna have to find another place to add that. And then what is left is just those journal cut aparts. So I like these images on this side, but I really like these as well. I think these make nice layering elements. I used one here in this car just kind of to fill in that corner. And because it has just a regular pattern on the inside, um, you can mix and match it with whatever coordinates and it isn't theme specific. Like these are um, well fall. This one kind of reminds me of Wilbur, Tamara's dog. Um, if you ever follow Country Craft Creations, she's got the cutest doggies. Um, but anyway, so these are just kind of fall inspired and that is what is left. So I'm pretty happy getting us through this collection that will help to make room for our Christmas, Christmassy collections. And that's probably going to be a project for me to work on Thursday and Friday. I'm just gonna start researching what is available. Of course, I don't always get the brand newest collections because those haven't come out yet before uh, the Christmas in July series, but I do want to find uh, collections that are still available. So if you're interested in recreating the project, you could order or you may have some already in your stash or you could just make it with whatever paper collection you like. Um, but I think this is going to be uh, a week project trying to gather up the different collections that I want. So that'll be all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and the remake of our folio. Thank you so much for being understanding about our uh, schedule for posting projects. And I do want to remember to give another quick shout out to friend Diane for sending me that sweet paper. Okay, that's all. I hope everybody will visit the description below and find links for our social media sites. And if you're not already, um, you can subscribe and join our family. Um, and then also don't forget to hit that bell notification. So you'll be alerted every time we add new content. And as always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day. And I thank you so much for watching. Bye.